Okay. Oh, all right, testing, sorry. Okay, so, hello. A little bit of a late start today. Just got other things going on. End of the month and so on. Okay. Shoot, I forgot to put part two on my thing. Oh, well. Okay, so I thought I'd talk a bit about what my plans are going forward. I'm starting part two of Sanctum of the Archmage today. I don't think I'm going to be finishing that before the end of um, Pride Month. After that, there are a couple modules I want to do kind of at the same time. So one of those modules is going to be a pen and paper conversion module, which is a fairly um, popular genre that I haven't really showcased. Basically, uh, Dungeons and Dragons being a fairly... <laughs> um, Dungeons and Dragons having uh, f a fair amount of content in its own right. Um, different editions have had folks create pre-made modules as part of as part of the campaign settings and toolboxes that that dungeon masters can use and um, so one of the genres for Neverwinter Night modules is to convert some of those pen and paper modules into into Neverwinter Nights modules um, there's a lot of work involved in that from what I understand it's really really neat oops and I forgot to run an ad so this is gonna be awkward <laughs> yeah oh well um, I think it'll be really fun um, and really interesting to see. So there's like a whole genre of it. There's this uh, fellow named Udasu who has like some fairly expansive pen and paper mods for like um, Lankmar Knights, which is based on the old Fafford and Grey Mouser um, books. Because I there were some uh, actually they uh, there's quite a bit of material for for fir first edition and like even pre-advanced Dungeons and Dragons for those uh, for those books um, and quite a few others. The one I'm going to be doing is called Lords of Darkness by the George. The George did a few other modules I, I've reviewed and played um, like Narcopolis, um, Stormy Night and Wake that I did for Halloween um, and also the uh, Desert Rose modules that I did. So it'll be it'll be fun to see that. The funny thing is, there's also um, a possibly a bit more famous module series called the Lords of Darkness, which is not the pen and paper conversion. Um, so I'm gonna have to make sure I specify. <laughs> um, I've heard really good things about that one, but it's more of a story based module than um, than uh, a PMP conversion. So. I don't want to tell people I'm doing something that I'm not. Maybe after, maybe after I do the one, I'll do the other. <laughs> Who knows? Um, I also want to continue with Blackguard because um, you know it's fun to play evil. <laughs> Poor Abigail Colts, and uh, I picked the wrong time to start her up. So, but that's one we're not really missing much. Worst case scenario, I'll restart entirely, but I think we'll be okay. And of course, I do want to finish Sanctum of the Archmage, um, even if it goes a little past Pride Month, but I might alternate or something like that. I haven't decided yet. I kind of think um, I learned with Prop is that while that was a really, really great module, it was a bit much just playing that <laughs> um, nonstop. It, uh, it was a long one. <laughs> so I'm thinking if I change it up a little bit, that might be good. Um, so I'm not playing the same thing all the time, but I haven't, I mean, aside from the fact that I'm playing Neverwinter Nights all the time, <laughs> I think maybe I need to, need to add in something different for a bit. And I've talked about, I know, doing maybe the Final Fantasy or, um, or Ultima, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of a creature of habit, all things considered, so we'll have to kind of see. 
All right, there is my TM. So that indicates that I should be going. Um, and my ad is done just in time. So let's see what part two looks like, even even if we're not going to finish it in like three days. Especially because I've got a few things I have to do towards the end of the month. So this, m I'm, I'm not sure this might be the only time I play it before the end of the month, which will make me feel a little guilty. But we'll see. Ah, beam dog. Good folks. They made the enhanced edition, and overall, I don't have very many complaints. Um, the crashing is much, much less common now. I won't say it never happens, because obviously you've seen that it does, but definitely it's a lot, a lot less frequent, or a lot more frequent. No, no, less. It is definitely less frequent. I'm garbling my language. Like to the point where I took, and <laughs> in one one moment I couldn't couldn't remember what the hell I was trying to say. That's not good. That's not good. It's possible I need I need more caffeine, or less caffeine. All right. Gosh, I do like the music choices in this. This is, I think, the first module I've played that really used a lot of a lot of um, non-standard music. It. Y Second, I think there might be a cat and dog issue going on upstairs. One second. That was funny. <laughs> I had a moment of, is that my stomach growling or is that so external? And it was external. The dog apparently decided to say hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I was talking about, very briefly, about the music. Um, as I've mentioned before, uh, the fan-made content isn't just the games itself that people have made, but also like the models, the portraits the areas, um, and, um, and there are, like, environments, uh, tile sets, etc. <laughs> so, um, there's, there are, like, compilation packs of community resources. Um, I've used, I've played quite a few modules that used a CEP, which is a set of, uh, like, tile sets, models, etc. resources. But um, this is the first one I think that uses the CMP, which is a compilation of, of community-made musical, cho uh, musical tracks. I believe they also use other tracks too. So you, so you may have noticed um, background music from like The Witcher, things like that. I think according to the readme, the, quite a bit of that's included. Oh, shoot. Okay, one sec, one sec. All right, let's see, let's see. Okay, so now that I've talked about the music, let's actually play the game. Hmm. And now I can't hear the music, because I have good timing. <laughs> Alright, so we talked to Endarian, but I stepped back. 
Okay. So when you're ready, you can begin playing chapter two. I am ready. What should I do sh to continue the game? Just select the option below to start chapter two and you should be all set to go. Okay, wait one sec. <laughs> Let's talk to some, something else. Um, what I want to check <laughs> is I want to make sure that Robin Scott and and uh, Orion have these things I shoved in their inventory. They're not Im hugely important things, but you know, I've got them. It'll be good to check that they still have the stuff I gave them. Because otherwise then I've got to carry it all, and I don't want to do that. It's mostly crafting stuff, and I'm not crafting in this module, but there you go. I do like Robin's purple boots. <laughs> Alright, I wonder if I wouldn't be more sympathetic to Robin's angst if he were, uh, if he were female, though. I think I might be, because it's a little less, <laughs> a little less young adult driven. I, I should mention again that the uh, canonical version of the character per the novels written by um, the author is um, is that Robin is female. Uh, Randia Kilraven, I believe is her real name. Okay, now, now we'll go. Alright, let's start chapter two. Pretty music again. <laughs> I have dawdled way too long. It's already 10.25. I like the music. All right, so how is this gonna start? Will we start with a cinematic, perhaps? Uh, actually, we're gonna start with a not responding. Great, oh, there we go. A starting area. Last time at a starting, ah, speak with me before exiting the waiting area. Well, that, that makes sense. Oh, hey. Hi, Ryan, do you, have your, do you have your shit? You do? Oh, and you have some food, so I'm gonna take your food. <laughs> a bonus hard deck. I like that. Oh, he can't give it away to me? That that makes me sad. Alright. Maybe that'll be a difference this time, is that they all need to have food. Well, that's gonna waste, waste a lot of time. So he can't give me his hard deck. That's weird. Are you sure? Ryan, can I please try to take that? Oh. Huh. Okay, I can move it there can't give it away. Huh. Okay. Well, I don't want to be starved. I'm just perplexed. Alright, well, let's check the map and talk to Andarian. You have successfully eloded Sanctum of the Archmage 2, the quest. This is Chapter 2 of the Sanctum of the Archmage saga, and it continues from the end of Chapter 1, the site. If you are able to see your companions in your party and find all of your items, then you should be ready to continue playing. You know how I think, and Darian, I'm not sure what I think about that. <laughs> well, I suppose an experienced module maker would likely know how players think. I, I just, you know, my, uh, my pride's a little wounded that I'm apparently so predictable. Goodness. All right. So great. Let's prepare to play chapter two. Before you begin, I need to explain a few things and ask you a few questions to set some important parameters for Chapter 2. Ah, we're getting to the customization part, which I like. Um, okay. Can you step me through what I need to know? Let's do that. Okay. The saga will feature three romanceable companions. Two of them, Robin and Orion, you've already met and should be in your team now. In this module, you make a third. For game balance purposes, I'm giving you the option to play with that companion as either a wizard or a ranger. Um, what would you recommend? That depends on a few things. If you're not already playing a wizard or sorcerer yourself, it could be helpful to have one in your party. On the other hand, if your team needs a good fighter, then having a ranger will help your team. My advice would be to take the ranger option unless you're playing a strong melee character yourself. Well, I am playing a bard. So I think we're going to go with the default ranger. It's a shame, because I do like wizards, but I'll be honest with you. I tend to like wizards most when I'm playing them. The AI, to be fair, both Prophet and Sanctum of the Archmage have had really good AI work done. Um, Orion's spellcasting generally makes sense. Um, 
he doesn't seem to waste too many heals. If anything, he doesn't heal enough, but that could be because I have him cast so many defensive spells first. <laughs> so let's make the companion a ranger. Done. Your new companion will be a ranger. No. So let's see. Tell me about any compatibility issues with previous versions of Chapter 1. Now I'm using the most recent version, so this shouldn't be a factor. This is 1.0 of the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition compatible edition of Sanctum of the Archbage 2. The quest. That's very nice. Um, like I said, this is, um, it's, it's really nice when we have some of the creators who've kept with their works and, um, and continue to upgrade them. I have nothing against the ones that don't, of course. People have, move on with their lives and they're not expected to keep up with their projects like 20 years later. But it is, I think, going above and beyond and I really appreciate that. So it should be playable in either Neverwinter Nights 1.69 that's Diamond Edition. That was the last, um, the last original edition of Neverwinter Nights. It's good to keep track of which edition you have actually when you're playing modules because some modules don't work on one or the other. Um, older modules sometimes still have issues with Enhanced Edition, though most of those I think have been hammered out with the various patches. Um, for example, in Profit, for a long time, there'd been an issue with the grave, the part where you're buried alive apparently wouldn't trigger correctly um, but uh, and there had been some fan-made fixes for that but by the time I played the uh, patches had fixed up whatever that issue was and it worked fine so that's an example um, now it's more relevant for backwards compatibility modern modules that have been released more recently and there's been quite a few um, may not play on 1.69. 1, 1. Under the hood, the two Neverwinter, the two versions of Neverwinter Nights are fairly different from what I'm told. Now don't, don't look at me for exactly how that works. I, I can barely program a VCR. <laughs> and that is a dated reference. Who the fuck programs a VCR, right? I don't even have a VCR. Why did I even say that? But, um, anyway, uh, I'll put it this way. I purchased uh, a water fountain for my cat. It is not together yet because I'm taking one look at the instructions going, okay, uh, so I have to rinse this filter and that filter and soapy water and do the, uh, this is a little beyond me right now. On the weekend, I'll tackle it, I think. <laughs> okay, so anyway, earlier versions of the module were released under the name Sanctum of the Archmage, the Miracle Worker, Act 1. So... The quest is not the end of the story, is what I understand, but I think it's going to be, it's not quite so obviously not the end. Um, I th have heard that the module maker is still kind of toying with and working on uh, part three. Um, I haven't heard that he's not anyway, but, oh, I've still got a few things, huh? Okay. All right. And I've still got Lynn's body. Some magic of the Archmage seems to be keeping it from decaying. Oh, good. I'm supposed to have the body, I guess. Alright. Okay. So we'll look at these later. I, I'm intrigued by the fact that they still exist in there. Is that a squeak I hear? It is. Come on here, babe. Oh, well. Cats. Come on, sweetheart. I'll pay attention to you if you come over here. You can climb on my lap again. Oh well. <laughs> this release is only compatible with, with the Enhanced Edition or version 4.0 or later of the Neverwinter Nights 1.69 version of Sanctum of the Archmage 1, the site. Because there's significant changes to the design and story for chap version 4, it isn't possible to play this module. Now oh, that's interesting that there were some story changes. I don't know anything else. So, okay, well I played version 4.0 or later of chapter one the say I think I played 5.0 is I think that's the version I played but I could be wrong about that don't quote me whatever version is up there good that shouldn't be a problem for you then okay tell me how the death system works in sanctum 2 that sounds interesting sanctum 2 uses a bleeding death system ah similar to the one you used since version 3.0 of the first chapter the system significantly changes the dynamics of combat. It's important to understand those differences in order to fight the battles effectively. You know what? I'm going to listen to this, because uh, I didn't know what the fuck I was doing in part one. So what do I need to know? 
When one of your party is re reduced to zero HP or less, they will fall in battle and be helpless until or unless they recover. Although you'll see a dead description on a fallen companion, they are not in fact dead, but die. Hi. Hello. Okay. Will you let me pet you while you're up there? She jumped to the back of my chair. Which is a bit of a rocking chair, so I'm a little worried because I don't want to dislodge her. So now I have to stay very, very still. Hi, why don't you come down here, sweet girl? Alright. Ah, there she is. Oh, no, she's down again. Okay. Alright, anyway, sorry. <laughs> okay. It is possible for a character to stabilize while dying, in which case they will slowly recover and eventually get up again. The message window will give you information about the current condition of fallen party members. Okay. So how can I heal a dying companion? Pretty sure I know, but let's be sure. You will start the module with two companion trauma kits. These are items that look like bandages, and each of them has ten charges. Oh, there's charges now? I don't like that. I really don't like that. If a companion falls in battle, you can heal some of their negative hit points by using a trauma kit on them. Oh, it does say something different. Ah, like I said, I don't really like that. I liked the first one where it was just kind of automatic, but it is what it is. Is there another one? I think Robin might have the other one. I might steal it from him, because really it's not like he's going to do anything with it. Okay. Healing kit? Oh, that's a standard one. Ah. Oh, okay. So that's just if they uh, don't have healing spells yet. So, let's just make sure I've got what I need. Um, okay. I got one here. Is that the one I've got here? Maybe. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, there's the other one. Okay. There we go. Well, hopefully we won't need it more than 20 times. I'm going to be reloading a lot. Alright, if a companion falls in battle, you can heal some of their negative hit points by using a trauma kit on them. You have a limited supply of these at the start, but we'll be able to stock up on them later. You should invest in keeping a good supply of them with you on your later adventures. Do I need the heal skill to use these? No. Although each rank you have in the heal skill will make the trauma kits more effective. Heal is one of the most useful skills in the Sanctum of the Archmage module, so I would advise that you take as many ranks in it as you can. Okay, how can I be healed if I fall and start dying? You can't do anything to heal yourself while dying, although wearing a regeneration item will help to slow down your bleeding and give you more time to recover. If a companion or ally casts a healing spell on you, that will remove some of your negative hit points and also give you time to recover. If you heal to one or more, you'll recover immediately. What happens if a character takes massive damage or eventually bleeds to death? The number of negative hit points that a character can survive depends on several things, including their constitution. If one of you gets close to this limit, you'll see warnings in the message window. Try to heal them immediately if possible. If you or one of your three plot-related companions dies, then the death screen will appear and you'll have to reload. Who are my plot-related companions? I know this too, but there you go. Robin and Orion are two of them. And the third is your new companion, who you meet later in the module. Interesting. Okay. Uh, we've covered those two. I think I understand how that works. Okay. Well, tell me how the resting system works, because that was an unpleasant surprise the first time through. Though I, I kind of like it, I just wish I'd bought food. In Chapter 2, resting and recovering spells and stamina will only be possible if you have food. Resting, or feeding a familiar animal companion, will consume one item of food. Food will not usually be hard to find or carry, but you will have to take having some in your inventory into account as you travel. It will also spoil over time unless you store it in a special magic bag. I haven't seen any of those magic bags. I want one. The food I item that is closest to spoiling is always chosen to first to eat. That's true, and uh, admittedly, only once did I end up losing out on uh, a spoiled item, and that was a berries. Can I rest whenever I want? There are some no-rest areas and forced rest events in the module, especially on the journey to Mount Cassandra. This is to create a particular mood for those parts of the module, and so that your priority is rested for the more difficult encounters. I know that some players find these frustrating, but please trust that I've planned the gameplay around them very carefully. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Okay? Oh, this is a good question. What should I do if I get stuck in a cutscene? The module has several fairly elaborate cutscenes in it. They are plot related and cannot be escaped from. Although they should be pretty stable, there's always the possibility that one of them might get stuck. 
If that happens, press the escape key. The cutscene will retry whatever it was doing when it got stuck. In the unlikely event that you encounter any cutscene problems, that should resolve them. Fair. Alright, now let's ask about the romances. Uh huh. Chapter 2 provides a lot of opportunities to develop the romances with Robin or Orion. And Orion. Hmm, he knows I was playing the field, I think, that you were able to start in the first chapter. It also introduces you to, very quickly, to start a romance with your third companion if you choose to. The third companion is female. Now, I could play Joshua as being, um, bi, or pan. But, I'm probably not. I think I'm gonna keep him gay. <laughs> but, no offense intended to... That is not intended to be by or pan exclusion there. Just that I envision the character as gay. So. Okay. Oh, one sec. Okay. Okay, one sec, one sec. Sorry about that. <laughs> a friend of mine had sent me a, a question about a game we're going to be playing, and I, so I, I had to adjust that very quickly. Okay, so anyway, like I said, I'm kind of envisioning Joshua is gay, so I'm so if I believe this one is a uh, female, so so um, let's ask first: Do the romantic settings carry over from the previous module? Yes. You might want to talk to your companions before leaving this area to check or change them if you want. Speak to the, your companions, choose the would you tell me what you think of me option and check the message window to see how far your friendship with them has progressed. You can also toggle it off or on. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to skip the module. Uh, romance, that's what I'm playing. <laughs> can I romance any companion I want? Sure. Just talk to your companions and use their dialogues to turn it off and on. Okay. Um... Did the mo- okay, uh, we got both of those. Tell me how the module is written. What kind of module is it? What should I expect? And how should I play it? <laughs> the module is very heavy on story and role playing, even more so than chapter one. Sanctum 2 is designed to be an interactive storytelling module rather than a hack and slash module. However, while it has relatively few combats, those few are very challenging and some of them will be difficult to survive without some self thought or strategy. Great. <laughs> my, my, uh, my strong suit. Ugh. Um. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> if you prefer, I can make those difficult a little easier. Ah, uh, let's make it a little easier. Cause I had enough trouble the first time, and I am playing a bard, so easier, please. Okay. I'll make the default. Difficult combat's a bit easier, though they'll still be challenging. You can use the dialogue on the control rod to change the setting later. Okay, can you give me general advice? Sure. The most important thing to remember is that you and your companions are a team, and you'll need their help. Use their spells and special abilities, watch their backs, and use the tr companion trauma kits to revive them. Try to use strategy instead of brute force. Alright, and let's see, any other topics that we might not have covered? Resting, stuck in a cutscene... 
Okay, let's... This is the one I didn't ask, which is important items. I covered all the others, so let's talk. There are two particularly important items in the module that you should know about. The control rod and the horn of rally, both of which I have. I am holding the control rod, actually. Cat's gone upstairs. I think she got sick of being ignored. Poor baby. Love you. Well, hopefully she comes back. <laughs> Tell me about the control rod. The control rod is the most important item in the module because of the way that it strengthens your sight. Using its powers will often be critical, crucial to playing the module successfully. It can be used as both an offensive and defensive weapon, each with its own unique powers. You'll have to equip it in your offhand to gain defensive benefits. Okay. I like two handed weapons, though. No, that's fine. Okay, how do I use the control rod? No. Things are happening upstairs. Let me uh, tilt this so I can hear it better. Okay. <laughs> Use the rod's uh, unique power to examine it and try to learn more of its powers. Um, use the long to activate long range power on creatures and objects to try to learn more about them from your sight. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that was a thing. Oh boy. One sec. Joy of cats and dogs, yeah? <laughs> okay, so. I didn't know I could look up long range creature stuff. Tell me about the Horn of Rallying. The Horn of Rallying is probably the most useful item. When activated, it will teleport everyone in your party immediately to your side. This unique power will make new combat strategies available. <laughs> huh. I actually didn't even think about that. So. Mostly it just came up whenever I, whenever I keel the fuck over. So, let's put this here in my shift quick bar. Alright, unique power. You know what? Let's put this here too. Yeah? Oh, that's the shillelagh. Where's my control rod? Um, I would like my control rod, please. I guess I'm gonna have to do some shit with it, huh? That is not what I intended. Where is my control rod? Let's throw shillelagh. Nope. I... Have I been playing with the fucking shillelagh instead of the control rod? What did I do with the control rod? There it is. Okay. Please tell me you're a club. Bayside a magic rod. It's not a club. So I gave myself club for no fucking reason. <laughs> Alright. Ah, oh, shit. Well, that's a waste. That is a waste of a of a feat, isn't it? Well, can't do anything about it now. Um, it is nice, though. So let's put that back. Oh, that might be why. Okay. Alright. Did I ask about the control rod? I did. Okay. What if I like using two-handed weapons? I understand and sympathize, but please try to adapt. Fair enough. Alright. Um, okay, that pretty much covers everything. I'm ready to begin playing. Okay. Alright. So, uh, let's see unique power. Greetings and well met. Let's use it offensively. Alright. Used as... So, please tell me it's a club. It is a club. Alright, I didn't waste my skill, skill after all. So it's got plus two massive criticals. Hold on a sec. 
when it was defensive. Hold on. Let's switch you back for a sec. Greetings and well met. Let's use it defensively. Okay. Immunity to mind affecting spells? Okay, you know? Shit. I think that's considerably better than... Well, I mean, I do like massive criticals, but I'm feeling like I don't want to be affected by mind affecting spells, so we're going to do this. At least until I find something that's... Um, unfortunately, though, the plus two for attack is, is actually pretty good. Hmm. Gosh, it... That's an armor bonus plus two versus the attack plus. Huh. I guess we'll keep it for now, but I might need to switch it for the plus two attack. And uh, so, or maybe I'll find a club that's plus two. That would be nice. All right. So what am I doing now? More preliminary stuff. Oh yes, I'm supposed to ask Robin and Orion what they think of me to make sure we're scheduled right. Well now Robin should have be more wishy-washy, I think. So let's see. Let's talk for a bit. What do you think of me? You're my best friend. And our friendship means a great deal to me. Go on. I also admire your courage and your heroic spirit. I completely trust you to watch my back. And for me, that's saying a lot, especially nowadays. I'm really glad to have you as an ally. Go on. I'm fishing for compliments. But you're more than just an ally to me. After your prophecy and everything else that's happened, I've come, come to think of you as my partner in defeating the Warlord. I hope I can always count on having you at my side in this fight. Go on. Never... Oh. Aww. And I, I really care about you. And not just as a partner against the Warlord. It's become hard for me to open up to anyone, but you have a way of cutting through that. I haven't felt this way about someone since... For a long time. Thank you for telling me that. Okay. So that's where we are. Alright. Um. Well. Well then. Um. Let's talk to Ryan. Hello to you. Okay. Let's talk for him. And would you tell me what you think of me? Oh. We don't, can't ask him about his past anymore. I think you're quite an extraordinary individual. And I owe you my life. I'd still be a soulless husk in that monster's den if it weren't for you. Come on. I can see why Leonard took you on as a student. As an adventurer, you're a natural. You're more than capable. You're more capable than most adventurers I know, with years more sp field experience. Aw. Go on. I also have to confess that I find you rather attractive. I wouldn't mind spending some time getting to know you better, once we have a chance to relax for a bit. Hmm. I'd like that too, but I'm afraid it'll be a long while before things calm quiet down enough for us to actually be able to rela relax. <laughs> Then we'll just have to do what we can in the meantime. Oh, there's a go on. I'm really starting to care about for you. I'd like us to get to know each other better and to become closer if you're willing. Oh, well, okay. So there we go. Well, that's quite nice. Okay. So I got Broody McBroody and Hot, hot Priest Daddy. Alright. It'll be interesting to see the third person. Um, as I said, I'm not sure yet. I'm, I'm leaning towards not romancing her on account of, um, I, I think my character is gay. But, you know, I, I don't know that for certain. Maybe, maybe he won't be. So, let's see. I guess we go forward. Oh, I was going to check the journal entries. Because <laughs> there are, they do still have them. So, let's see. Defeating the Warlord. Although I can't sense details, my talent has allowed me to foresee some of what we need to do if we're to have any hope of defeating the Warlord Zarmoran. Oh, this is new. The last and most important of these will be to open the Sanctum of Leonard the Archmage. But the Sanctum cannot be opened until, quote, the time is right, unquote. And all the other conditions required for victory against the Black Magus have first been achieved. I don't know if we... I don't know if we'll get that far in this module. All I know so far is that both Robin and I are indispensable to defeating the Warlord. If either of us dies, then all hope for the future will be lost. Okay. Lung's body. I've been carrying Lung's body all the way from Blackwing Lodge. Some magic of the Archmages seems to be keeping it from de decaying, thank goodness. Still, I'd like to be able to find an appropriate place to bury him. Maybe we can do so once we reach Mount Cassandra. I hope so. 
That takes up a lot of space. <laughs> Flood the low caverns. Interesting. Here. I've told Commander Marin about the flooding of the lower caverns. The war between the Earth and the Hellmen is now over. Interesting that that sticks around. My experience with Simon seems, for the first time in my life, to have given me some measure of control over my strange ability to project in the future. Holding the rod I acquired in the ancient master control room strengthens this feeling, so I'm going to make certain to keep it with me from now on. Okay, and that's old stuff. Okay, so let's go. Finally, we're starting. Like, almost an hour in. <laughs> First passage. What does this say? Oh, the way to Mount Cassandra. Oh, that guy's still leaving me notes. That's kind of him. Listen up. I've oh, there's... The passage is here to your left, Joshua. You've already got our journey mapped out. Sure, I've been reading Handel's journal. He made some very good maps of the passages as he traveled through them. <laughs> Throw a in the mistress's file. Well, it didn't take him long to make you obsolete. <laughs> Handel's maps are as good as my memory, I'm sure. Or better. As I said, it'll be a pretty dull trip. Okay, so flirt or care for? I'm going to flirt a little bit. I've learned to enjoy every minute of it. You promised we could get to know each other when things settled down. I'm going to hold you to that. Orion smiles warmly at you. I haven't forgotten. I'm looking forward to it. The last few weeks have been, well, stressful would put it mildly. An extended spelunking trip with a charming and attractive young man will be a welcome change of face. Also, Robin. Ah. Well, I am a bard, so I think I'm going to go bold. You turn to Orion's smile with a feeling of expectation. Well, we'll see what we can do about relieving that stress then. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, good, I get to do both. That makes me happy. Oh. Oh, I can't, I can't fuss over him too. That's okay. See Robin fight and fail to suppress some mischief's grin. Well, you lovebirds have certainly earned a little quality time together. Try not to get too relaxed just yet, though. We need to keep a good pace to get through Mount Cassandra as soon as possible. And Ryan, I still need you to give me a tactical update on the demon offensive. We can make camp here and do that before we rest. Aw. I suppose we were like, no, nah, we're like the sidekicks who are romancing each other, like in uh. Uh, Eli Monfress and Robin's the main character. That's okay. Though, I do want to play up the love triangle a little longer. Though, I honestly, given everything, I, I'm leaning towards Orion more than Robin. Though, I like Robin as a character, don't get me wrong. Uh, I see nothing for now. Feeling slightly disappointed that Robin seems to be encouraging my relationship. Ah, Robin is matchmaking a little bit. I'm not, I'm not wrong. Of course, Commander. I can tell you what I know, although I'm sure things have changed in the weeks since I left on my mission. I hope you'll try to take a little time to relax on the way, Robin. I worry about how hard you push yourself. This can't be a relaxing trip for me. Not when demons are sweeping across my kingdom and my people are being slaughtered. If the resistance is destroyed, then all hope is lost. Not only for Carlissa, but for the world as well. Not quite. Uh, using the site. Not quite, Robin. It's you and I who are keys to victory against the Black Magus. You suddenly turn to Orion. And Orion, he's part of it too now. A few others as well. I think I can't see clearly who they are yet, but it, as time goes on and events play themselves out, I will. Me? How am I supposed to be so important? You and Robin, I can see. Your talent is our ace in the hole, our secret weapon against the Warlord, and the rightful Prince of Carlissa is the only one who can rally the people against the demon threat. But why me? I don't know exactly, Orion. All I can sense is that there's something important that may need to be done. Something that only you will be able to do. Hmm. Orion becomes quiet, looking strangely sobered. I think I'm starting to understand how the two of you must feel, he says slowly and at last. <laughs> Let's be cheerful, I'm a bard. Welcome to the Save the World Club. Membership 3 and growing. You're not saying that we could succeed even without the resistance, are you? It would be harder, and our chances of success would be slim, but it wouldn't be impossible. Interesting. Our chances, of our chances of success. You don't know for sure, then. Your talent doesn't actually tell you the future. Nope, this isn't profit. <laughs> different version of... It is funny to play this right after playing profit, though. Two different types of sight done in, the, in a different way. 
Metaphysics are fun. Not exactly no. All I can sense are possible futures and what the odds are for them to occur. That's why what he shows me is always in flux, like the flow of a river that's constantly changing. I see. Like every time one of those possibilities actually happens, like Len's death in the valley, which I don't remember seeing, or rescuing you and having you join us, the flow shifts. Some possibilities change or disappear, and whole new sets of them can open up. Robin looks at you with renewed wonder. All those constant changes must be impossible to keep, make sense to keep track of. They were, until I was repaired by the master control system in the ruins. I must be some kind of genetic engineering that created my character. Until then, all I had was a jumble of random impressions that I couldn't connect to each other. Then we'd spend months at a time solving complex logic equations, trying to figure out how to make just some of them fit together into a coherent picture. Okay, that makes sense. So that's why I didn't predict the death. So it's Grandfather was a master mathematician. I don't think there was anyone in, in the world who could have done that aside from him. And even so, we were only able to come up with very... Or even so, we were able to come up with very little. The only thing we knew for sure was that you and I were the common elements in everything I sensed that was related to the defeat of the warlord. Are you squeaking at me again, baby? Poor baby. I think she's stressed today. Oh, this is going to be a busy week for me, so this might be the only time this week that I'm on. But I'm hoping that won't be the case. If it is, it is. <laughs> Alright, it's different now, though. Oh, sorry, it's different now, though? <laughs> Yes, now my, my mind seems to be able to organize those impressions for me automatically, and in a way I can actually make sense out of. Orion looks thoughtful. That sounds like Calisthenes' theory of perception. The reason you see different objects, or sorry, the reason you see distinct objects, he held, instead of disconnected sensations of color and shape, is because your mind learns to organize them into a coherent whole. Now let's be smitten. Your knowledge of philosophy never ceases to amaze me, Orion. Yeah, it's something like that, I think. Orion smiles, looking vaguely pleased with himself. Thanks. That's enough banter for now. Let's set up camp here and get some rest. We've got a lot of ground to cover in the morning, so that seems like a hint. How are we doing su for supplies? We're very low on food. I'm not sure we have enough to make it to the surface, though we should be able to find more in the passages. We should try to look for food as we travel. And try to rest and eat only at the end of each day's march. Okay. Uh, we're still close enough to the earth and city to go back for food and other supplies. Maybe we should do that before setting out. I'm not sure. I'm anxious to get back to the surface. If we tighten our belts, we should be able to make it without going hungry. Uh. You want to be risky or not? You know what? Let's do it. That makes sense. Let's make some camp here. Hey, sweet girl, come here. Oh. <laughs> okay. I'll start setting up camp. Okay, I'm assuming we're going to be talking soon, but I gotta quickly check to see what the camp is. Sorry about that. <laughs> She's such a good girl. Okay, so... Huh. Okay. Let's see. Ah. Oh, shoot. So, what do we have here? Uh, completed... Archetypes? Ah, alright. Quest of the Beastman, Ally and Vengeance. Okay. Earth and Road, Earth and Girl, Leonard's Gem Lore. What does that one have? Various gems. Lesser gems carry a charge of magic power that can be expended with great magical effects. Oh, here we go. Red. White is immunity to level drain. Green is regeneration. Isaac's Missile Storm. Nice. 
and Violet is for crafting. Escape through ancient ruins, handle the journal. Robin's matchmaking. Robin seems to be encouraging me to start a relationship with Orion instead of him. I'm disappointed that he seems to be so close to my affections and is trying to mix me up with someone else instead. But you know what? I'm kind of willing to go for that, so. I might start inching away from the love triangle element just because I'm not I'm not all that on board with the love triangle. I don't really have a lot of patience for it. So we're setting up camp. We've rested. Okay. Hello, Susan. Talk for a bit. Okay. Um never mind. And Robin? Well met, friend. Talk for a bit. Okay. Uh Never mind. Okay. Alright, so we have rested. Let's go this way. Dead end. Do not go this way. This way. Okay. Well, I would like to explore, though. Oh, the passage winds a lot between here and Mount Cassandra. We should be prepared for a lot of twists and turns. Okay. Alright, I would like to see what's up here, though. Just to see if there's anything to loot. Is there food? It is. Food is good. This was the original passage to the ruins that was sealed by the earthquake. It's a dead end now. Makes sense. Not sure I like that this is appearing twice, but it's not that bad. And it increases the likelihood that I'll see it, if it's above my head as well as this. Because God knows, sometimes the companions will do weird shit and disappear on us. Is there anything over here? I think we missed a turn. Handles map says that we should have gone right. Probably, but I want this thing. Try it. Nice. Did, oh, DC is two, so even my weak spellcraft <laughs> made it work. Hi, babe. Want to come over here? Sweet little girl. Come on. No? Come see me. Ah, the the trauma and perils of not being able to call, to summon my cat. <laughs> I'm needy. I want her attention. All right, this way to Mount Cassandra. Nice. Now, oh, berry bush. Well, we can definitely use more of these. Handles journal says that there are scattered patches of subterranean vegetation in the passages. As Usually near pools of water. Sometimes they can be a source of food or medicine. Uh, purple berries are a food source. Okay, let's take some. Five breast beards. Nice. Okay. I'm probably going to regret not going back. I agree. I realize. We marched for hours through the winding passages, setting a brisk pace and making good time. Okay. I guess, uh, you know, we're taking poetic license and imagining that's so much longer than it actually looks like it is. Herd animals? That's interesting. Can we eat them? Probably not. Listen to my words. Oh. Must hear them. I think we took a wrong turn a while back. This looks like a dead end. What are those odd creatures? Some of the races that live in subterranea keep domestic animals for food and other purposes. This group looks like it may have gotten separated from a herd. That makes sense, but who could they belong to? The earthen often breed their domestic animals small, so they're easier to handle. This must they must have been ah, these must have gotten lost in the passage from the earthen city. Hold on, I see something shining in the middle of those plants. It looks like a crystal. I think you're right. They're scattered at random throughout these passages. Maybe we could cut a gen loose. We can try. Uh, there's plenty of water and vegetation here. We should search for food and medicine. I can offer to eat one. What about the animals? Ah, he's offering to eat one. Are you suggesting that we eat one? We don't have anything to cure or keep the meat from spoiling, so we probably can't use more than one of them. And if we try to slaughter just one, the herd will attack us. Well, the meat spoiled that quickly. Yes, the Resistance has a supply of magic bags that can keep food from spoiling as we travel, but we don't have one with us. Handel carried ours, and the slimes that consumed his body before he, he found his remains must have destroyed it. That's too bad. We're running low on food supplies and could really have used it. 
So what do we do? Do we kill a, f a whole herd for just one meat, ma meat ration? Uh, no, let's not kill the animals. All right then, we'll follow your lead. I mean, if we could take all, if we could carry the food with us, I would say we should eat them. But killing five of them for just one does seem pretty wasteful. Hopefully, I won't regret that. <laughs> but let's look for food and medicine. There's an exotic plant. A miscellaneous small healing. Oh, good. I've got some flasks. I can make a healing potion as needed. Um, grow glowing fern. Anything we could do with that? You'll need to chop it to reach its contents. Oh, well, that we can do. Bash. Am I doing any damage to it? Not really, am I? Just a tiny bit. Oh, two. There we go. Oh, there's a red crystal. Oh, haste. Nice. Okay, hold on a sec. We're going to save because I want I want to make sure we get that one. The purple, it doesn't really matter. But the red, yes, I want. Okay. So is there anything else we can, we can loot about? If only we could lure one of these herd animals away and eat it that way. That would be good. But I don't think there's a way to do that. And I don't want to kill the others. Uh, alas. The steak sounded really good. <laughs> if we had a way to preserve the rest of the meat, though, I would, I would have done it. Because we can take it with us. But it's just the waste. I, I can't... I can't accept the waste. Joshua is a forester, after all, um, as well as a bard. You've reached the end of your first day's march. Okay, are we going to be resting here then? Don't know if I like that. This looks, this looks like a good place to rest and set up camp. Sounds good to me. Three of you make camp, and you have first watch. Your companions are soon asleep, leaving you alone with your thoughts in the eerily quiet cavern. I wonder whose voice that was. Was that my voice? Probably. You find your thoughts being drawn to the strange control rod that you found in the ancient ruins. Let's examine it. You spend your watch familiarizing yourself with the control rod. By the time you're done, you're sure that you've learned enough about it to uncover more of its powers. Sleep on what you've learned. Okay, so let's see, let's see. So, defensive control rod. Let's use it offensively for the second. Okay. So, how does it look work again? Hmm. Eh. I still think the immunity is probably worth more right now. Well Alright. Sight. Concentrate on it. To learn more about it. Oh, that's where I can make things harder. You can feel your talent sharpening. Uh, bec you can feel your p talent becoming stronger and sharper as you concentrate your thoughts on the rod. Concentrate. Ooh. In your mind, you can feel your talent probing the target of your attention. You realize that the control rod connects is a kind of lens for your ability. If you focus your talent through it onto a person or object, you can sense things that may be hidden about them and their potential futures. Okay. That is kind of cool. Alright, so we're going to switch it back to defensive, though. Make sure I'm armed. Okay, and let's level up. So we're going to go with Bard again. 
heck do a level of barbarian? Could be a terrible cleric. Yeah. All right. So let's see. We definitely want these. <laughs> Huge magical device is the reason I'm wearing my helm. I actually did check on that afterwards, and I'm not really supposed to wear it without being able to carve, <laughs> carve the uh, head of the golem out of it. But there you go. Healing. Okay. New spells. Can I have new spells in previous levels? No. Well, I mean, I can just trade out. Um, bestow curse. Cure wounds. Dispel magic. Is that pro or con? Hmm. No curse. That might be good. Keen edge. Find traps is useful, but we have Robin for that. Let's go dispel magic. You never know. Improved invisibility. That is nice. Uh, too many good spells, huh? Neutralize poison. Oh, I can do two. I can do two. Okay. You know what? Let's do dismissal. And summon creature four. Okay, so I want to go back a little bit, and I want to see. I want to. I want to look at the um. What's it for that? Okay, shift. That's the wrong one. <laughs> okay, I had meant to put this one here. Control rod. Yes, long range. Ah, uh, nothing new. Okay. So, let's look at my companions. Robin. Ooh, something new. Nothing new about Orion. Oh, did I actually select him, or did I miss? Because it looked like I missed. Let's try this again. Orion. Hey. Just in case. There, now I can make sure I've actually selected him. Might still say nothing new, but I want to. I want to be sure. There we go. All right, I just missed him. All right, let's let's fucking exploit this shit. Oh, I can do it on myself too. I've had a chance to examine the control rod during my travels, and I found that it can act as a kind of lens to focus my talent. If I use it to help me concentrate on someone or something, I can sometimes sense things about them that are hidden. All right, let's see. What do we got? We have. Okay. Robin's the linchpin of every hope I can see of defeating the warlord, and much of the reason centers around his unique potential as a warrior and adventurer. As scion of the royal houses of Carlissa, Eld, and Mount Cassandra, Robin possesses the inherited magical power of all three ruling families. If he can live long enough to realize that potential, he could one day become even more powerful than his grandparents, Leonard the Archmage, Queen Talina of Eld, and the Peregrine King. Orion. What Orion learned about the origin of the gods in the ancient race has started him on a personal journey that will inevitably end in a violent clash with his religious beliefs. One sec. <laughs> Poor baby. She was mostly intrigued by the part of this box that was, that had little cardboard glue, like fastenings glued onto it, but I didn't want her to eat the glue, so there you go. Alright. I'm still not sure where that crisis of fate will ultimately lead him, but there's little chance that he will be able to hold on to his calling as a priest of the Order of the Light. Oh, that's harsh. So what does it say about me, I guess, is the next question. Uh, guys, stop crowding me. I need to be able to aim at myself. <laughs> Alright. 
me. No, I know that. I wasn't aiming for him. I was aiming for me, you ass. Get out of the way, Robin. Greetings and well met. Guys, can you stay in back for a second because you're crowding me? These assholes. I just need a moment to myself, boys. Alright, now I'm going to try it on myself. Ah. Okay. I, I don't get to use it on myself? That, that sucks. Are you sure? Greetings and well hmm. Met. I wanted insight about myself. Damn it. Alright, well... I guess that's fair. He, here... Never sees himself. Come here, baby! You're just gonna climb the stairs and squeak at me for more attention, aren't you? Alright, well... Let me give you one of these. We'll reward bad behavior, yeah? Come here, sweet baby. Come on, would you like one of these? Mm -hmm. <laughs> really? Really? You just kinda bounced it back like a catcher. One sec. It's right by your foot. <sighs> I love, I love her. I do. All right. So let's go this way, and hopefully we get to travel on. All the dawdling didn't add extra time to our journey. Okay. So now I'm just gonna hit everything with a stick, metaphorically speaking, because I, I'm amused by this power. Even if I can't see anything about myself. Poor Orion, though. Like, Robin gets the, oh, he's going to be more powerful than Len, and Royal, etc. And Orion's just got the, well, fuck. Your job sucks. You march for hours, setting a brisk pace. Okay, good. Like, sorry, dude. Your life kind of sucks. <laughs> Being a priest when, uh... When the gods are not what they seem to be is not too much fun, I suppose. Okay, that was with the Roth, right? Yeah, I think so. Oh wait, no, it's in this room. I've gotta say something here. This looks like a good place to rest. Let's camp here. Hmm, shouldn't we push this on? We've got a long way to go. I'm glad you're as eager about that as I am, but I want to be cautious. Just because Handel and Orion didn't encounter anything dangerous in these tunnels on the way in, doesn't guarantee that we might not on the way out. I don't want us to be stumbling with exhaustion if we do. Alright, that makes sense. I'm not terribly attached to the idea of keep, keep going. Good. You don't need to talk anyway. This is probably a good time for it. I'd like that. Ah, uh, he's such a good guy, Orion. Seems to sense that Robin wants to talk to you privately. I'll start setting up camp and getting something together to eat. He walks off out of earshot and begins rummaging in his pack. He's such a good guy. What did you want to talk about, Robin? I'm not sure where we should start, but... We should probably talk about how we feel about each other, and our conversation in the passage after the battle with the Hellman. I'd like to talk about that, too. Uh. I'm glad. My situation is complicated. And if we're going to work together, we need to understand each other about how about this. It's important to me. Hmm. Well, I'm kind of my character's kind of in love with with three men with two men. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go with that much. I think I'm gonna go with falling in love. I care very deeply for you, and my feelings only seem to be getting stronger as time goes on. Hmm. Or do I just want to do attracted to? Because, I mean, there is another option, and I'm definitely leaning towards that other option. Joshua's got a daddy king, what can I say? 
Also, I don't really want to be pressuring Robin. And some of the dialogues really early on felt like I was pressuring, trying to pressure him a little bit. And I'm not really comfortable with that. I think I'm going to go with three. I confess that I'm very attracted to you. I think I'd like us to explore that, but I'm not sure we're ready for a relationship. I'm glad you got some perspective on your feelings. I was afraid that you might be falling in love with me. A relationship between us just is impossible, and the last thing I want to do is break your heart. Will you tell me how you feel? Ah, that's the same thing as before. Uh, so I really care about you, not just as a partner. It's become hard for me to open up to anyone, but you have a way of cutting through that. We've read that before, because you do love me. I care for you very much, and to be honest, not entirely as a friend. But no, I don't love you. Please don't feel rejected. It's more than anyone's been able to make me feel since Stephanie died. Oh, how did that go song go? I want you, I need you, but there ain't no way I'm ever gonna love you. Don't be sad. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> ah, meatloaf. And trust me, lots have tried. I've rejected so many admirers that it's given me something of a reputation that- Oh, really? I am rolling my eyes. I shouldn't. I mean, I think I think the author does a really good job in making him the kind of romantic lead. I, I just, I don't have a lot of patience for that kind of romantic lead. Many of them call me an ice prince, even the ones who don't even know I actually am one. I'm not surprised that you have so many admirers. Thanks for the compliment. I'm not terribly flattered by the attention, though. That interest isn't always honest. Reputation for being a romantic challenge can make you a target for some more out to prove their seduction credentials. Robin's face hardens. If there's one thing that I can't stand, it's being treated like a potential notch on someone's bedpost. Hmm. You see why that would upset you. How do you handle it when that happens? I can be pretty cruel when I feel like I'm being used. I made the last would-be seductress run for me in tears. Oh. Pretty harsh. Eh, good for you. I like your style. <laughs> At least that seems to have worked to put a damper on the worst of it. It only made the gossip and rumors worse, of course. But I can deal with those. Hmm. Some of them must be have been sincere, though. I am. Is your heart really so close to love as that? I can't open myself to those kinds of feelings again. Not now. Hey, cat. <laughs> what are you doing back there? <laughs> Come here, baby. Come here. I'll give you attention if you come over here. Come on. <sighs> Sorry, one sec. I gotta pet the kitty. You gotta come a little closer, monster. <laughs> yes, of course you're gonna plop down right outside of my arm's reach unless I stretch back like this, and which kind of aches, you know. I'm not as young as I used to be, kitten. Alright, there we go. Okay. Anyway, not now. Not until the war is won. If I did, I would lose the will to keep fighting. There's no room in my heart for both vengeance and love. That's just the way I am. It's my anger that gives you my edge. What drives me on against the warlord. I can't afford to give up that edge. Not if there's a chance that it could mean the defeat between victory and... Or the difference between victory and defeat. To your dismay, your talent confirms the truth in Robin's words. If he fell in love now, it would destroy any chance of defeating the warlord. But you could al you also sense that this could change in time. And there's hope that someday the two of you could be together. I think I'll go with this one. Aw, that's kind of mean. Alright, that's how you feel. I'm attracted to you, but it's not like my heart's going to break if we can't be together. I'll keep my options open. If you change your mind, you know where to find me. I like that one, actually. Thanks. I'm glad you're being sensible about this. I didn't want you to be hurt. Hope it bothers him a little bit, though. And don't be afraid to move on if you meet someone else. I won't mind or be upset. Who else do you think I should want to be with, if not you? What about Orion? Well, I have to admit I do find him attractive. He really is an amazing and unique man. I think the two of you could be really good together. Why don't you give it some thought? I think I will. Good. I had a feeling about you two. Alright, perhaps we can talk about something else from now then. 
All right. What else would you like to talk about? I would like to strengthen the friendship end, um, too, because I, I, I think Josh was somewhat distancing himself from Robin, mostly because I don't have the patience to go full on love triangle. You know, I, I think, I think we already know who's gonna win, and he's got a pretty cloak. I'd like to know more about you, about the other side of your life. See, part of my issue with Robin is not. At, from the perspective of someone old and cranky, is that it's always all about Robin. And it's understandable. I mean, he is the linchpin character to everything, and he is the one who's going to be the king, and he's got a lot leading the resistance, so he's got a lot on him. But I feel like I feel like he's very one-sided, um, my character's appreciation for him. And yes, that's partly because he can't let himself fall in love and so on, and that's fair. But also, I kind of don't think he really, like, even at... And maybe I'm just misremembering. There's probably a bit that he did because I feel like there probably there I do remember one or once or twice where he does ask about your character's well-being, but not a lot. I mean, we've lost everything too. Our parents got got uh, Owen and Baru Larst over at the beginning. Len was important to us too, and that doesn't really matter. I'm carrying his grandfather's corpse in my bag of holding, and he hasn't said a word about that. So you know. <sighs> It's not his fault, really, but he's not really a great partner material right now, I think. So, uh, I mean, he does do some good things with regard to, uh, when we've got issues, um, with the, he's been really good when we've had issues with our fear fights. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. Ooh. Shoot. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. So let's ask ask about him. Sorry, I just noticed I had to deal with something. Okay, anyway. I'd like to know more about you. About the other side of your life. About Prince Randall Kilraven, leader of the Resistance against the Warlord Zermaran. And that's another thing. Is like He's got this whole other life that, my, that Joshua's not been a part of. So that kind of gets in the way of... I mean, realistically speaking, I don't know anything about that. And it does get in the way of potential romance, I think. From the adult perspective, I think... If I played this when it first came out in 2007, when I was 24, I would have eaten it up. <laughs> I, I really would have. But I'm older. I'm old. Okay. I see that you've been talking to Orion. Yes, I lead the resistance forces. Uncle Nim, that's Pr Prince Nimrod, Lord of Mount Cassandra, is nominally in command. But both he and Grandfather agreed that as rightful heir to the throne, they would defer to my leadership. Was Lenwin's king? Why didn't he command? Grandfather was old and never felt well suited to the role. That's why when he stepped down as king, when my father was ready to take the throne. Grandfather had many virtues, but he didn't possess the kind of skill as a leader that was needed to win such a desperate fight. And he knew it. And he, But he believed I did. He was right. You do. Touches your arm in appreciation. Thank you. That means a lot to me. I'm not always sure of it myself, but I can't afford the luxury to let myself worry about it, either. That someone with your abilities has such confidence in me is reassuring. You're welcome. But you were telling me about your role in the Resistance. Most of them know me as Field Commander Robin Blackwing. Commander- See, I don't even know that part about him. That gets in the way of the whole romance thing. 
commander is a high rank, and high enough to give me an excuse to meet occasionally with Uncle Nim without raising suspicions, but it's still low enough not to draw too much attention, or to become a target. How do you manage to command if you can only meet with him occasionally? There are a few special agents in the Resistance who know my identity. Ah, there's the kitty. There's my kitty. Hello, hello. Okay. I receive reports and relay orders through them. Like Ryan. Yes, he's one of my true, two most trusted operators. Who's the other one? Her name is Diana. Ah, that's the other companion. She's the captain of my personal guard and leads my elite rangers when I go out on combat missions. Like the one where you got your back torn up by demon claws. That was my fault. We'd ambushed a pack of low-level demons and one of them broke away. I ran after it and got too far ahead of my companions. We didn't realize they had allies in the area until I ran into them. That was reckless. I know. I held my own for a while, but eventually they swarmed and overpowered me. What happened next? They rent the ar armor right off my back and raked me to the bone. If, or Diane and the others didn't reach me just then. His eyes closed, a pained look on his face. It's okay, we don't have to talk about this if you don't want. Thanks, but I do want to talk about it. Okay. Do you think it's changed you at all? Yes, I learned an important lesson that day. It's one reason why I keep warning you to be careful. One reckless move like that could spell the end, not just of you, for all of us. I'll try to remember that. My armor was ruined, of course. While I was recovering, Uncle Nim visited my bedside and gave me the suit that I wear now. I tried to refuse, but he wouldn't hear of it. It's a rare and legendary armor, made from the kind of beer, uh, beer, <laughs> of pure blue steel ore that simply can't be found any longer. Hmm. I found we found some blue steel remains. They looked very pure to me. Hmm. Now we'll go with this one. It was a magnificent gift. I'm glad he gave it to you. I might not have survived without it. Uncle then made me promise never to go into battle without it. We found some blue steel remains. They look pretty queer. Yes, I remember that. We should take them to the Master Smith when we get to Mount Cassandra. We might be able to make some truly exceptional weapons or armor from them. I'll do that. What were we talking about before? Uh, Diana, your personal guard. Right, I'll introduce you when we reach Mount Cassandra. She was curious about you and wanted to meet you. Does she know about my talent? No, as far as I know, Uncle Nim is the only one that Grandfather trusted with that knowledge. Alright, well, let's talk about music. We are bards, after all. What would you like to know? Hmm. It must be hard for you to choose the path you've taken. Wasn't your great life's ambition to become a great bard? Ah, uh, he grimaces, and you can tell your words are struck a star, star spot. It was. The dream is gone forever now, though. Why? Even if we win this insane war, I'm the last of the royal family. I'll have to assume the throne. Rule Carlissa, marry, and beget heirs. Aw. Oh. And that, that's something that hasn't come up and I don't think has occurred to Joshua because I am playing a man. Um, and presumably it's a male character. There's no way to, there can be no going back to being the Bard Prince. Not ever. Oh, shoot. Well, let's see. Marry and beget heirs, so there's no chance we could ever really be together then, is there? No, I'm sorry. Even if it could come to care for you that way, the responsibilities that I now bear would make it impossible. Hmm. Could you, couldn't you reclaim your ambition one day? Len was eventually able to step down in favor of his son. You could do the same. Grandfather was never able to return to being an adventurer. He'd been away from it for too long. He did the next best thing by founding the Silver Star Adventurers Academy in Lanaman. He was an amazing headmaster and helped to train a whole new generation of heroes. Many of whom are members of the resistance. Well, yeah, but you're not an adventurer. You're a bard. So you could just, you could retire and go back to barding. I know. All right. You're, you're a half elf for one thing. So you've got the longer lifespan. Stop whining, dude. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being mean. But, but seriously, though, he's got a long lifespan. Just let the kid grow up, hand it over, and you'd still be a fairly young bard. Len wasn't half elf. <laughs> All right. Anyway. I know Orion told me that he'd been one of the students there. But he knew the price that he would have to pay when he assumed the throne. And so did I when I started out on the path I am now. You don't have to surrender your life that way. You can choose your own destiny. I can, and I have. I could have chosen to give up, you know. To flee to a faraway land and let Zomarin win. But I didn't. Why not? I need you to understand this about me. I love my kingdom and my people. 
and I'm proud beyond words of the legacy of justice that my family has given them. Restoring that legacy is more important to me than anything else. The career I once sought is a hard price, or is a small price to pay for that. So you will have to open your heart to Logan one day, won't you? Hmm. Some of my advisors are counseling me to do that already. Lord Rugan is constantly throwing noble and el eligible mates in my direction and nagging me about dangers of not carrying on the royal line right away. I've refused, of course. Uh. Hmm. I don't want to go the jealous route. I really don't. For one thing, I'm pretty sure Joshua is just... I mean, I'm going to flirt with Robin a bit more, but... Joshua hadn't thought about the consort thing, and it's pretty clear. I mean, if there was a sibling, that'd be one thing, but there isn't. We'll go with this one. He's a fool. What the kingdom needs now is a general, not a breeding stallion. You're doing the right thing. After all, if if we lose to Zomarin, it's not like the kid's going to do any good. <laughs> hey, kid. Come here. Come on. Did you ever eat the one I tossed at you before? I think you did. One more. One more I'll, I'll give you. <laughs> Aw, you're such a good baby. Okay. There we go. That's exactly how I feel about it. Thank you. It's amazing how much how we think alike sometimes. Yeah, because we're both young, young idiots. I was asking you about your music, though. It must be hard for you to find time for that. Do you miss it? Terribly. But you might be surprised to learn how much time I actually do manage to find for it. Really? Do you still compose? Could you play something that you've written? Could I play something for you that I've written? What do you think I've been doing for the last two years? Ah, I thought that I recognized the common style among them. And I always did suspect that they might have been your work. You've got a good ear for music. I'm impressed. Well, I am a bard. I feel like he doesn't even care that I'm a bard. I know that's just because this storyline is written in that way. Um, it does probably doesn't take your class into account, but still, it comes across like he's a little. Uh, he doesn't quite realize. You've got a good ear for music. Yes, I wrote almost everything I played for you. You've been my f the first audience for all of my new work. I wrote most of it while on the road, traveling on combat missions, or meeting with the resistance. So you wrote Nimrod and the Heroes of Glorn. Yeah, a few months ago, while returning from Aunt Cassandra after Uncle Nim told me the tale. And the princess. And the prince. He swallowed suddenly, recalling a bitter memory. Stephanie wrote that as a declaration of her love. When she finished singing it for me, I asked her to marry me. Was she a princess? Then? I'm not going to be jealous. What's the point? Actually, yes. The youngest sister of King Maynard of Thressa. She had traveled all the way to Lanaman to attend the Bardic Academy there. So, what about the Body Tavern song? We'll change the top topic a little. Yes, believe it or not, I wrote that one years ago, before the Warlord and oh, before the Warlord, and performed it on a lark in one of the less reputable establishments in Lanaman. There was quite a scandal about that, as I recall. Not that I ever paid much attention to that kind of thing. Sounds like you were a real wild card then when you were younger. So I'm by far the youngest of this group, my character. You could say that. Do you perform or share any of them? Or just write for yourself? Oh, I share them all right. Most of what I write now are battle ballads of heroism. They're intended to inspire the resistance and the people to fight against the warlord and not lose hope. So you've turned even your talent as a bard as a weapon against the warlord. Yes, you'll discover this soon enough as you travel the lands, but the ballads of Blackwing the Bard have become notorious, not only throughout Carlissa, but in some of the neighboring lands as well. Doesn't that risk making you a target? I thought you wanted to keep a low profile. I do. That's why I try not to let on to anyone in the Resistance that I'm a bard. Uh, well, your last name is Blackwing. They didn't figure out that you're... Oh, well, it, he actually gets into that. That's why I try not to let on it to anyone in the Resistance that I'm a bard. At least not to anyone who doesn't already know my true identity. Blackwing's a common enough name, so no one so far suspects that Commander Robin Blackwing of the Carlissan Resistance and the mysterious Blackwing the Bard are the same person. That still sounds a little weird when you put it that way. So you've actually got two secret identities and not just one? 
Hi, sweet girl. What are you doing? Let me pet you. Let me pet you, baby. Okay. That's right. And it's another reason why I'm so eager to play for you about... Ah. <laughs> and it's another reason why I was always so eager to play for you at Blackwing Lodge. I can't perform openly most of the time. It meant a great deal of me to have a chance to relax and to just play and sing for such an attentive and appreciative listener. It's always about him. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fair. It's it's like I said, I like him as a character, but he's got all basically he's got all the the uh, trappings of the young adult um, male lead. I think I know that it's basically the same if he's a female character. I am not sure how. I would react hearing it from a female character. I think, to be honest with you, and this is sexist, I think I would be more sympathetic hearing it from a female character than a male character. I it might feel a little less uh, <laughs> young adult, but that's okay. Anyway, those times meant a great deal to me too. And you can always perform anytime you want. Thank you. It's a shame that they'll be much more difficult from now on with you joining me in the resistance. I can understand, but we'll find a way. Thank you. You're welcome. Both lapse into a cu comfortable silence, realizing that your long talk together has created an even stronger bond of friendship between you. I think we've talked about everything that we need to for now, don't you? I think so, too. Then let's get some rest. I wonder what happens if you have to do a cutscene and you don't have <laughs> and you don't have any of the food. That would kind of suck. All right. So, yeah, um, let's see, let's see. So we got new stuff. I finally had a chance to talk to Robin about his feelings for me. Although he does seem to be attracted, he doesn't love me. And his heart is close to any kind of relationship between us. Uh, romancing him. Yes. I told him that I was attracted, but it's not going to break. He's glad I'm being sensible. I didn't ask quite like that, but it's fair. Uh, I indirectly asked if he could ever choose me as con consort. He said that because he will have to rule Carlis and carry on the royal line that we can never truly be together. Hmm. Even if he came to care for me that way, and even if we were to defeat the Black Magus. That, I believe, is a difference, depending on if you're playing a gay or straight r romance with him. Um, that, in the end, with um, that the character can't can't finalize the deal if, if for a gay romance in that respect and on one hand it's a bit annoying but on the other hand I get it and uh, I mean it's probably realistic we could be the uh, Robin doesn't really seem the type to have a con concubine <laughs> alongside a concert all right okay if you proceed you'll be too far from an area that you've traveled to have time to return there Ah, I wasn't planning on returning to the Earth and City, so let's proceed. Hmm. Conversation ended naturally. Oh, let's see. Conversation ended. Uh oh, via abort. What the heck? All right, let's well check that. Friend. Okay, nothing new. Uh, I'm not gonna pick that. I'm pretty sure I'm going with Orion, because. Joshua is a bard, so he's dramatic, but I think he's pragmatic enough to go with the one, um, with the one who can actually, let's view the romance settings. You are romantically interested in. Never mind. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm not changing that. Actually, let me make sure I didn't accidentally change it. Okay, good. Let's switch over. Okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> Just checking. So this is kind of cool. There's a jump point? Oh, we get to jump across. Nice. Hi, baby girl. Bye-bye, baby girl. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Okay, so we want to get around there. And it looks like we're going to have to go around this way to do it. There are bones. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't meet this thing while we were... When it was alive. Oh, fair point, fair point. It occurs to me that this game basically is um, a dungeon crawl with a... Uh, or at least the first one was basically a dungeon crawl with story, but the story was the more unique aspect of it. The character interaction. You march for hours, 
setting a brisk pace and making good time. I wonder how we're doing food-wise. I hope there's another place to get food, because maybe I should have stopped at the Earthen Village. We got that. We got some tack. Is that all I got? Shit. Okay. Yeah, two. I thought I had some fish. Did it, do I still have a fish, or did I finish it? I might have finished it. That's not good. Um, we might have only two days of food left. That would not be good. Positional plant. Journal. Okay, that could be a problem, actually. Yep. Oh, I can wear Robin's clothes. I'm not going to wear Robin's clothes. That's creepy. I don't know why I did that. Where did the kitten go? Oh, there she is. Hi. What are you up to? Sorry. <laughs> I'm always distracted. Sometimes I've wondered if maybe... Oh, <laughs> yeah, well. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking I only have... Hmm. That's a little... That's a little upsetting, because I feel like I kind of need more food than that. Medicinal fungus, not food fungus. Yep, I probably should have taken us to the, uh... Fuck. Should have taken us. Shouldn't have listened to Robin and his bullshit. Oh, there's Lens Corpse. Yep, we're fucked. Alright, well, I'll just have to keep an eye out and hope we find more. Should have killed the, uh, things after- Oh. This doesn't look good. I didn't see any mention of this flooded cavern in the Handel's journal. Neither did I. Do you remember this, Orion? I think so. There's a short section of the passage that dipped down lower than the rest, just like this one does. But there was only a small underground stream running through it, not a lake. So why is there a lake now? What could have happened? Oh, the stream must have been connected to the low caverns near the Earthen City. When we flooded them, the water must have spilled through here. Hmm. Well, this is going to be inconvenient. How are we going to get through? I'm not looking forward to having to swim. We should try to avoid that if possible. The underground seas in the subterranean are notorious for harboring deadly predators. There's no telling what the flood might have washed into this cavern. So what else can we do? There might be another way. There are islands of firm ground along the way between here and the chamber exit to the southwest. We could probably jump. Ryan nods, sizing the distance. We'll need to be careful, but I think we could do it. What do you think? Let's try it. Yeah, this isn't heights, so my character's fine with it. I wonder if the fear of heights is still going to be a thing. There's a dead body. Can we loot it? It looks like it might be lootable. Okay. If he's got food, that'd be good. Woo! Oh, shit. Oh, hi. It came too. What's... What's trying to kill us? What is trying to kill us? Oh. Oh, there's another Robin here. Okay. Well, that's weird. Is that a glitch? Or is it like a duplicate? A doppelganger of some kind. Hi, sweetie. You gonna stay with me now? I'd like it if you did. Here we go. You're so cute. Everything's fine, sweetie. She's kind of looking at me freaked out. I'm wondering if she's not hearing something. Alright. The cat's often freaked out, though. Okay, dead body. Food? Ah, oh, no. Not a torch. It looks like a Helmand warrior. He must have been washed into the cavern by the flood in the low caverns. Or er, into the chamber. Deep mist clam, tell me you're edible. It snaps when you touch it. Look at this clam, it's huge. Ow. It's a trap. Ow. Alright. There's a 
pearl in it. Want to keep trying? <laughs> Can we unlock it? Can I beat it to death? No. Alright, I gotta stop doing that. I'm like dying stupidly. Okay. Woohoo! Alright, well, there's probably a way to deal with the fucking clam, but I can't disarm the trap, and Robin's not interested, and uh, the pearls probably would get us money, but I don't think Joshua's that, that touched the idea. Oh, interesting, so, it's like some weird glitches you jump across seems to activate a battle mode. Weird. You sense... Ooh, I sense the presence of a malevolent and powerful mind trying to probe my thoughts. Where? Oh, th that's interesting. Okay. So maybe it wasn't a trick. Okay. Let's click it on me and see what happens. And well met. Uh, nope. Nothing like that. Put it away for now. Not strong enough to reveal at this time. Well, that's something to work towards. Ah, uh, dude, you gotta get out of the way. There we go. I keep trying to kill Robin. Stop it. Okay. What the hell was that? Your <laughs> sight gives you a warning of impending danger. Oh, that's nice. It auto saved for me. <laughs> that's spectacular. I love it. All right. So impending danger, huh? There's a waiting point. I guess we're gonna have to go here. In the distance. Through the rocks, you can see a passageway leading steeply out of the far end of the cavern. To your dismay, you realize that there are no more islands of ground to jump to between you and the exit. Uh, looks like we've hit a dead end. There's no way forward without getting into the water. Uh, there's nothing for it then. We'll have to swim. With our armor and equipment, won't we drown? I think I can hold my breath long enough to make it across. What about you? think so, Orion. Do you see the water along the edge of the cave there, to the left? I can make out rocks and ground not far under the surface. If we hug the wall, it might be shadow en shallow enough to wade across. I see it too. We'll have to be careful though. Yes, the water looks like it gets pretty deep in the center of the cavern. If we get too far from the wall, we may end up in it over our heads. It's not just that. My talent is ringing like an alarm bell. There's something else in this cavern, and it is watching us. A threat? Can you sense what it is or where? Not exactly. It's some kind of presence, like a powerful mind trying to probe our thoughts. Whatever it is, it doesn't mean us well. Hmm. I don't think we have a choice. Whatever is waiting for us, let's make sure we're prepared. Okay, well let's cast spells to prepare. Ah! Another autosave. Alright. I would like... Where'd my other spell go? I would like greater magic weapon on my on myself. And... Oh! Spell failure, really? Oh, oh I can do haste, too. I forgot about that. But only if the first one works. Seriously? Fuck, I forgot about that. Alright, hold on. Gotta strip naked to cast spells. Great, now I gotta dig that out again. Okay, and... Ghostly Visage. 
And they're both looking. They're totally looking. Okay. Alright, let's see. So we want to hug. Okay, so I think we want to go to the waiting point and go in. I think we're as ready as we can. Let's go. Ooh, submerged passage. Oh, interesting. Okay. So we're trying to hug the wall. Is there anything out there we can eat? Doesn't look like it. Stay to the shallows on the left. The deep water to the right gives me the creeps. Well, I'll listen. There's something in here. Oh, shit. It's staying hidden in the deep water. If it comes to battle, we may be forced to face it there. And I sense the malevolent creature watching me from below the water. I think I'm gonna... I hate wasting a, a thing, but we might have to. Do I have any craft potions? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've got a craft potion or two. I also have a few more healing kits somewhere. Let's go with a craft potion. Oh, wow. I really do suck. You know you're bad when the cure light wounds actually do, makes a difference. Okay. There's a way out. Run for it. Okay. <laughs> there we are. Let's go. It's a trap. Oh, an unseen force pushes you firmly back towards the water. It's a trap. No way out. We'll have to defeat whatever created this magical barrier to escape. Alright. I'm going to create a bad idea save. Yeah, actually, this is accurate. Shit, fuck, oh no. <laughs> Definitely accurate. <laughs> Alright, so I guess we're going to have to go try to kill things. Um, and I think... I have I have a summon spell too. Do we want to try it? I think we do. One sec. The problem with the spell magic is that while it's or and dismissal is that while they're good spells to have, it's gonna be harder to deal with. So, um Let's go in. Where's this thing we gotta kill? Oh, we need to not drown. Fuck. Okay. Back down. Yeah, we're all drowning. You're correct. So where's this thing we can fucking... Oh, that's the passage back. Hey, it's a light crystal. Nice. So where's this thing we gotta kill? Hmm, an exotic underwater plant. I might steal that. Our health wise is not doing too bad. There's a brain horror. Where's the brain horror? Yeah, I know you're drowning. Relax. Ooh. Hmm. Huh. Antidote. Okay. Well, I was hoping for food, but okay. <laughs> Especially since we're gonna need it soon. Alright, so the others are there trying to fight things off, so let's go back over there so we can help before they die. But dire wolf it. Oh, there it is. Hi. Yeah, I know. We're all drowning. <laughs> but we're doing okay. Oh, fuck. I'm not. The spider's not either. Oh, my. I'm the one that's fucked up. She stole my dire spider. Great. Okay, I know I have other... Yeah, I know. Relax. Okay, ah, fuck. Come on, open the fucking pack. I need to open the pack. Oh, that's annoying. Alright. Alright, we're gonna need to go here because I can't get to the pack. That's one I didn't anticipate being an issue, but I can't get to the, uh, freaking backup kits. Yes, I know. I don't want to renew. Thank you. <laughs> I let a subscription expire and they keep, uh, keep telling me about it. Like, yes, I'm well aware that I let, this let it expire. Fucking deal with it. Thank you. Uh, not that one. Okay. 
So we're going to have to try to... Okay, I've got a lot of kits. I just need to make sure I've got access to them. Maybe I should have bought more. <laughs> oh, well. Let's see. Okay. So... I've got the plus three temporarily. Um, okay. Kind of miss having Olinja around, but she had to meet a lover. Alright, so... Let's go back in here and see if we can find that fucking brain horror. It occurs to me that Horn of Rallying could be useful. Yeah, I know. Uh, where are we? Okay. We're all drowning. Yay. Yeah, I know we're drowning. Where's the fucking thing? It's supposed to be here somewhere. Yeah, we're all trying not to drown. Thank you. Well, maybe we'll... Oh, maybe I should have clicked the thing first? Yeah, I know we're drowning. Relax. There he is. Guard your mind. A brain horror. Well, that's why I have the, uh... Well, you can blind that, but my, uh, rod is not gonna let you succeed. That's why I keep it defensive. Because honestly, while I like the, the thought of having something that hits hard, Let's do this. Let's sing a song underwater. Glub, 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 glub. Or maybe the seaweed is always greener on somebody else's lake. Dream about going up there, but that is a big mistake. Okay. Let's uh, stop singing and start healing myself. Okay. Robin's not doing too well, but I'm doing really badly. Yeah, I'm aware of my drowning. I'd appreciate if the words didn't get in the way of me actually selecting myself to try to heal myself. Thank you. Come on, guys. Let's hit him. Oh, we are fucked. This is gonna be hard. <laughs> okay. You know what? I think... I'm thinking we might... Ah, this is accurate. Alright. Do we have anything else we can use to our benefit? Well, let's sing a song. Sing, sing a song. We could do bark skin. I do hate wasting, but I think I kind of need it. There we go. Alright, let's try to find the fucker. Alright, you know what? Let's... Okay. Oh, that's the, to the Earthen City. Okay. Not drowning anymore. Oh, I was gonna summon my, uh, my thing too, wasn't I? See if we can do it without stripping naked. Huh. Not that I mind to show. I am a bard after all. Okay, let's go back down there. So I'm thinking. We m okay, guard your mind to brain horror. So I'm thinking the trick might be to get us out of the water and get the thing to follow us. I just gotta remember which direction to go. Okay, here, here, you fucking thing. Come on, come on, guys. Okay, now we don't actually need to rally. I was thinking we would. And now, how am I encumbered? Yeah, all right, fi fair enough. Ah, oh, it doesn't work. Okay, back to those. Okay. Actually, we're not doing too bad right here. Now, if it starts looking like we need help, we're gonna go back up and, uh... Oh. 
Hey, I've got the fucking control rod. I don't have a fucking control rod. Uh. Fuck. That's unfair. Did I lose it? Wait. Did it fall out of my pack? It shouldn't have. I should have an... Where is it? Where is the control rod? Did it fall? It's not that big. It shouldn't have. Oh, there it is. Okay, I need to make sure that that's actually on here. Oh, come on, you fucker. There we go. Oh, we're doing okay, actually. I think we're doing okay. Oh, fuck. No, we're not. <laughs> I'm fucked again. Hey, I'm supposed to be immune to mental shit right now. There we go. Got him. Wait, I thought we did. Didn't we kill him? Oh, shit, look at that. Oh, I see, I see. It's uh, just telling us, uh, can we loot his corpse? Nice, and there's a key. Do they have an underwater lair nearby? Probably. Well, let's, we'll look for it, but first... Okay, let me mark where we are right now, because I want us to breathe for a little bit. Corpse. And then we'll go back and look, after we've had a moment to recover. Okay, come on, guys. Shit. We're all dying. Come on. Are you kidding me? Come on, guys. If we die here, that's gonna be so stupid. Come on! I'm so close to the fucking thing. Guys! Can one of you heal me? <sighs> Combat? Heal me, please. just need enough healing to get out of here. <sighs> yeah, okay. If you could, please. Thank you. Alright, I'll I'll rally us up here. <laughs> I don't want to leave it. To okay. You recovered. Wonderful. I think I lost my uh, healing kits from last time, too. Because it was, it was smart to leave them there. Of course it was. <laughs> Alright. I don't like wasting healing kits, but we also can't have fewer, don't really have enough food to to be worthwhile anyway, so let's put these here. Okay, we are going to quick save. I'm going to try to make sure my companions live. We are alive, so that's good. Orion, if you would, hold still. Okay. Eh, better than nothing. Okay. All right. So we want to find we want to find the underground lair, don't we? Okay. So if we were an underground lair, where would we be? I guess we'll be kind of thorough. Just try to keep an eye out so that we can get back out before we drown for good. Yeah, I get that. We are all drowning. Oh great, now we're stuck. Because we're idiots. <laughs> okay, probably not that way then. Oh, but there's something. There's a light crystal. Can we open that? Okay. Yeah, I get that we're drowning. Ooh. Okay, um... So let's give that to Orion. He's doing the worst. Healing get underwater. There we go. We're doing okay. Okay. And there's the plant I noticed before. Wish I was paying more attention to where the damn thing appeared the f to begin with, but that's that is what it is. Yeah, I know we're drowning. Relax. Okay. Yeah, I know we're drowning. Relax. Can we get above? Can we get up? Okay. Yeah, we're looking for an underwater lair. Okay, we can't get very far, though. That's the problem. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so aggravating. Reminds me of Ultima. We're hungry. 
Yeah, we get it. Relax. Now, anything down here we can click on? There's a light crystal again. Oh, that's... is that something? Okay, uh, I'm kind of fucked, but can we survive again? Or am I going to die? I think we found the lair. Oh, tunnel leads out underwater and impassable shit. Alright, um... I need to use this because I'm fucked up, don't Okay, so that is not the underground lair. It's just a cave. Uh, probably gotta heal Robin soon. Yeah, I know you're drowning. Relax, we really should have stopped at the fucking <laughs> city. Seemed like I knew I knew better and I didn't listen. Okay. Okay, back up to this way. Yeah, I know. We're drowning. We're drowning. It's okay. Alright. So far, not much good. But I want treasures, so we're gonna look. And there might be food. Will there be? Probably not. Am I wasting healing kits for finding out? Probably. But I mean, worst case scenario, I can... I can always try to steal it anyway. <laughs> Corpse. Up this way. Oh, that's... Leaf water to earth and city. Passage back to earth and cities over here. That's interesting. There's a, a another cave. I do want to find this under around there, though. Even though it's probably a terrible idea. Uh, I should have gotten the heal spell instead of dismissal occurs to me. Because really, I mean... The likelihood of me pulling off something like dismissal in battle is really rare. I mean, it's a good spell to have, don't get me wrong. But it's relatively rare that I'd be able to pull it off. And I'm wasting so many healing kits. So I'm thinking next time I'm going to switch out dispel magic and for a healing spells, and I'm going to go more healer route, I think. But it's a little late for that now. Okay. Is there anything over here we can explore? Okay. There's the light again. I think that's the same one we looked at before. Shit. Yeah, I know. We're drowning. Yep, it is. It's absolutely the same one we looked at before. So why am I even doing this? Because somewhere there's an underground lair. And I need to find it. Oh, fuck. Come on, come on, guys. Can you please move, you idiots? Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, I know we're drowning. We're all gonna die. It's fine. I just wanna find it. If I find it once, then I can get it to... Oh, there's a light crystal I didn't. No, that's the one I looked in before, I think. Um, well, we can try it again anyway. Yep. Come on. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm the one drowning again. Let's, uh... There we go. Come on. I'm going to go this way. I mean, once I find it, I'm going to reload and go straight there. <laughs> I am going to save scum this bullshit. But... Okay. Okay. The problem is I can't really see anything <laughs> good. Okay. That's where the corpse was. Maybe there'll be something near the, where the corpse is. Let's tilt a little so I can see a little easier. That's again. I mean, I can try to go here. Leave water to Earth and City. Yep, that's where we were. So 
so try going up a bit. Yeah. That's the same one we've been going around, so maybe it's hopeless. Keep going in a circle and I'm not finding anything. Makes me want to cheat. So I've been, I know that this cave is not going to do anything, but I was looking to look, grab this light crystal. Nope, nothing here. Yeah, I know, we're all drowning. Relax. I'm going to reload anyway. We are just scouting and seeing if we can try to find this fucking thing. If he's even got one. This could just be like a red herring. Yeah, we're all near death. I'm gonna let you both drown. While I search. <laughs> this is awful, isn't it? I'm a terrible mit I'm a terrible uh partner. Come on this way. Okay. Can we get around here? Oh, there's another one. Nope, oh, you guys are gonna die. It's okay. I'm letting you drown. What's down here? Oh, is that it? That's another cave I didn't look at. Okay. Leads out completely underwater. Okay, send out that one. Bye, guys. I know you're. You're both gonna die. It's fine. So not that this way. Oh, I think I'm stuck anyway. <laughs> that laugh is kind of hilarious. Okay, I'm trying to get up and I really can't. Okay. So not over here. That we've ruled out. Yeah, I know you. I know I'm drowning. Relax, thank you. I'm still looking, or, and now my camera does is not helping me. Still looking for a thing. I know I'm drowning. Thank you. And there's that goddamn green one again that I keep circling around. Yep, I. Yep, I'm letting the Prince of the Realm drown. I'm just trying to find this thing. I've been up this way like a hundred times and no fucking luck. Okay, come on. Not that way. Maybe up this way. I love my glowing eyes and the thing. Yeah, I know you're dying. I'm well aware of that, friend. I'm well aware. Ah, that's the one I can't go fast, but I'm trying to get to a different one. Okay, see that? That one I can't do, but I, w I want to get above. Okay. I'm too deep. How do I get up? I don't know how to swim up. That's my problem. Is I really don't know how to swim up. Okay. I'm glad you're alive, guys. I am swimming in a circle. Constantly swimming in a circle. <sighs> okay. Yeah, I know. This way's fine, but I want to be over here. This way. Not to that one, though. I know that cave is not it. I want to find... I want to get up to this. The passage back to the Earth and City on my map I want to find. Yeah, I know. Relax. You're fine. I can't get up there. It's like, why can't I swim up, guys? Why will you not let me swim up? Hmm. Bye. <laughs> I know. There probably really isn't anything. It's It, it literally is just a trick. Okay, but I'm going to go this way. I want to see what's up this way. We are exploring. And then I will say... 
I will load, and none of this will have happened. Okay. Come on, this way. Okay. Yes, I'm drowning very well. Okay, if I were a fucking... Whatever the f- oh, yeah, let's, uh, let's try not to die. Look at how much healing kits I'm wasting. Doing this. Okay. So I've gone- I went over there, and that's no luck over there, that way. I don't want to go down. I'm gonna go up to a different corner. <laughs> I don't seem to have any luck going in any other direction. <sighs> well, I'm probably gonna call it a night. I may, uh, I may off camera see if I can, or off stream see if I can, uh, find the thing. Uh -oh. <laughs> Alright, so that seems like a good place to call it. Don't worry, they're not really dead. We're ending with them meeting a watery grave. Okay. <laughs> well, that's kind of a bleak point to end it on. Don't worry, I saved earlier. Um, let's see who I can raid to. I, uh, I think that would be fun. Or maybe not. Might, might not, might not raid. Probably gonna raid. Alright, well, I'm gonna wish you guys good night. Thank you for sticking around and watching. Bye-bye.